Jesus is the answer for the world today. Hi everybody, Pastor Joe here with your morning devotion. Turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. I have something I want to share with you that'll make you think. <laughs> It'll make you kind of ponder on this thought throughout the day. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 through 6. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called with all lowliness and gentleness with long suffering bearing with one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace there is one body and one spirit just as you were called in one hope of your calling one lord one faith, one baptism, one God, and one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Now, we know that Ephesians was written by the Apostle Paul, and we see that it was a letter as he was imprisoned, and it was a letter that was written uh, to the Ephesus church. The church in Ephesus. That's why it's called the Ephesians. And my question to you today, and pretty much in this thought, is, is so important. Is so when he wrote this letter to the Ephesus church and spoke in the words that he spoke here, what denomination was the church in Ephesus? What denomination? was the church in Ephesus. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, uh, the church was born, right? Um, the Holy Spirit came upon mankind, came upon the 120 in the upper room, and the church was born. And on that day, I'd like to know what denomination was it? Was it a Pentecostal denomination? Was it the Baptists? Was it the Catholics? Protestant? Was it Methodist? Lutheran? Um, you know, what, what denomination was the church when it was born by the Holy Spirit? Pretty, pretty interesting question, right? And the answer pretty much is that the church was born by the Holy Spirit, but denominations, there was only one. There was one church at that time. Paul was writing to one church at that time. Um, the word Christian didn't even exist yet. They were the people of the way as they gathered, and it was the church. They were the body of Christ. Um, before the church was born, there was no such thing as the body of Christ. There was no such thing as the church. There was the temple. There was different gathering places and things like that in the synagogue. But the church now was a whole different dimension. And there was only one of those. There was only one church. And as crazy as this sounds, it wasn't even a building. It was a people. Christian people. The church. It was born now. It was brought into the world that we knew back then. So, if that would be true, and there was one church, one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, so who created denominations? You're correct again. 
man, we, people, created denominations. Now, I can understand the concept of denominations because denominations are based on interpretations. If you have a specific way that you believe in the unfolding interpretations of the Word of God, you go to that church, Pentecostal, Baptist, Lutheran, Methodist, and onward and onward and onward and onward, Catholic, Charismatic, whatever it is, right? Because of interpretation, these things have been created. But at the same time, though denominations were based on interpretation, it also brought division within the body of Christ. It brought a separation within the body of Christ. So though man had good intentions, or should I say sincere, in some ways we're, very, we're sincerely wrong. Because the Word of God says one body, one spirit, one church, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. You see, when the enemy wants to destroy something, he begins to infiltrate, let's say warfare, all right? Let's, let's just pick on, let's say, the military for a second. For us to attack another country, the, engaging in warfare, they want to do two things to be able to uh, cripple that army or limit that army. One, communications. They want to destroy any any communication uh, places that they know of that they can destroy so that there's no communication because then there there's division in communication. Then you want to be able to destroy wherever the military has its weapons or ammunition so that they can't reload or gather more you know, of their material to do what they need to do. If you can divide those two things, if you can destroy those two things, you would divide all of them. Now they would be scattered. If you look at everything as a whole, let's say a million soldiers, and you had to fight against a million soldier, soldiers, then the first thing you would want to do is say, let's scatter the million soldiers and divide them against each other so that we can attack them and have them attacking each other maybe also. And it's amazing how the enemy uses what man decide, decided to use as uh, a good thing, denominations and use it to divide and conquer the body of Christ, to which we know he can't do. But he can limit the body of Christ. He can cripple the body of Christ in the sense of uh, uh, have them so much bickering against each other that they won't have time to do what their Father in heaven has called them to do. The body of Christ has been wounded in such a way when it comes to the very beginning of what the church it was supposed to be. I'm going to read this scripture again. And I want you to chew on that because in the gospel, Jesus prays for oneness. And it seems like that prayer has not only not been answered, but it's been attacked for over 2,000 years because if only there was a unity, if only there was a oneness, the power that would take place like the day of Pentecost would be achieved. So let's stop them. I'll close with this. Ephesians 4, 1 through 6. I pray therefore the prisoner of the Lord 
beseech you to walk worthy of the calling of which you were called, and with loneliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called, and one hope for your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. The word one is what God has manifested. The word many or denomination is what man has created. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would help us, Father, to walk in these last days in one mind and one heart that we would not get so caught up with doctrinal understandings but we'd get understanding of what your assignment is for us as Christians we give you all the glory and honor in Jesus name we pray amen and amen God bless you